Good morning from Kyle Army Race Circuit, South Africa. It is December 2020 and it's the final race of the endurance racing calendar. The Intercontinental GT Challenge Championship uh, race is set to commence in about um, 45 minutes, half an hour's time now. It's race day, so here's a quick re recap of the weekend so far from Thursday night practice, uh, Friday qualifying day uh, to this morning. So I'm currently living in Germany at the moment, but there were no direct flights from Frankfurt or Cologne. Uh, so I had to drive to Amsterdam to take a direct day flight from Amsterdam to Johannesburg. Then on the Thursday, the first day of the running, we lost 75% of our running because of a clutch and gearbox issue, which the boys did really well to fix and get us out for night practice where we could then start our test program properly. I bolted on the head cam, so make sure you follow the link at the top of the screen now to see the full, full length stint of that session. I was then nominated for and, uh, Super David Pole, Pittard, which was really cool. He's nominated as the driver. And so started David, very well. David Pedal is hustling on, isn't he? So under the radar, but a very, very talented young British driver. As he drifts out wide there towards the curve, up towards the line. He's got other cars still starting to fly. Lap ahead of him, a 41, a 42 point. No, a one forty. And now you're right up to date. You can see that the cars are just rolling out now and it's, we've done a mega job to be the only uh, manufacturer to put two cars in the top six shootout with Sheldon van der Linde qualifying P3 uh, and myself qualifying five car P6. Um, we struggled quite a bit on Thursday. The team did a great job to get the cars uh, competitive again and um, we think we should have a strong and good pace for the race itself. Uh, uh, it's 29 degrees already uh, at half past 10 in the morning uh, and I think it's going to be a very hot, very long, very fast race. As it's only uh, 12 cars, uh, there's going to be a very limited chance of safety car. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a long and hard and fast race. So let's jump to the grid uh, and jump into the nine hours. Good luck boys, we're still in this championship to win it, both cars, uh, so yeah, best of luck to uh, all the drivers, all the crews, uh, but yeah, we're gunning for this Intercontinental GT Challenge Championship title. <laughs> to the race are you feeling confident David absolutely yeah, and in the heat as well it's gonna be pretty tough out there for both car and driver so um, yeah looking forward to the event <laughs> But in the Kyle Army 9 hour and in the championship, the last round of Intercontinental GT Challenge powered by Pirelli is go. The car stormed down to the kink at turn one. It's a drag race between Bentley and Honda. And look at the BMW hustling up on the inside. Augusto Farfus has got the drive, has he? No, not quite. Bertrand Baguette breaks late. The Honda will turn into turn two just ahead as they're being run out wide is Jordan Pepper. They're all safely out of the right at Crowthorn then as they head up the hill now. But a really good getaway then by the Honda. It is Bertrand Baguette in the lead of the race. Yep. Martino made another mega start to make up two positions uh, before dropping one. And we were running fifth at the end of the uh, first two hours, which is a good place to be within touching distance of the leaders. Uh, however, it was clear to see that we were struggling with pace a little bit. I jumped in after a safety car restart and this was the most exciting part of my stint. Uh, the start when the Porsches tripped over themselves and I was able to take advantage of. Fantastic racing! I mean, a magic, magic race. All into, again, Clubhouse Corner trying to compensate, trying to make advantage. And then Bortolotti is the one. Look at the BMW, it's making its way up through the field. Pittard likewise. So on that opening lap, is, those, is that raindrops on the camera it is already? Spot Down the hill, look at Campbell trying to fight back. He's lost certainly two positions that we've seen. Actually, probably three because... That was, however, the highlight of the stint, unfortunately, as, yeah, our lack of pace really, really showed during the race. Um, and because of the lack of cars, I just ended up sort of driving around in no man's land. However, we knew it was a long race ahead. Uh, and even though we were running P7 at the time, uh, yeah, still five and a half hours to try and make something happen of it. So we are just over four hours to go in the race. So five hour, almost five hours done. Um, pretty tough race for us so far. Um, our car isn't quite in the window performance wise. So 
We're dropping quite a bit of pace. Uh, I mean, on ultimate lap time, it's up to a second a lap, which is, uh, yeah, massive, especially, especially when the field is so competitive and so tight. And uh, I think we're running around just over a minute off the, the lead at the moment. Um, not really sure what we can do. We've been able to trim some of the anti-roll bars in the pit stops to try and uh, make some of the time back again. But yeah, we're still just out of the window really. Uh, I'm running around in seventh. So yeah, it should be a fairly long race in these sort of endurance races. Just got to pray for bad luck on others uh, really. So we're just gonna run around, try and get to the end and uh, see what places we can pick up. So yeah catch up later. As I jumped in for my second stint, which would have been a double stint, uh, I knew this was already coming. Uh, a racing driver's worst nightmare. I had to pull out of the way of the leader to let him pass and become lapped. Yeah, very embarrassing, but uh, it showed sort of the pace deficit that uh, we'd had over the, t the green flag running that we'd had. Um, the Honda had managed to gain uh, a whole lap on us. Kuda's first flying lap, so is it one or two laps he's gone down? David Pittard comes in having a very good stint from David Pittard, certainly yeah. ran competitively quickly. What was very interesting though, that the later the race went, uh, the more competitive the car came. So as the, the track rubbered up, as the 12 cars were laying down Pirelli rubber, uh, the setup came more and more towards the M6, which made us more and more competitive. So I was actually able to stick with the leaders, uh, the top three and, and, and their race pace, which was very good from my perspective, but unfortunately it was about six and a half hours too late Seconds to actually do something behind. about it. The fourth place BMW, so that's got a mountain to climb. Let's work and see what's this all about. That's David Pittard having a wild old ride at the bottom of the mine shaft. Now, why did that occur? I will tell you, John. Uh, I was actually uh, trying to speak to Gerd on the radio and just missed my turning point for the mine shaft very slightly. Got on the dust and the dirt that had been put out over um, seven hours of running so far and literally just understeered off the track. So I was very lucky to get away with that. I was also very lucky in my timing of my stints. Uh, literally, as I was about to finish my stint, the rain came. So we're out on slicks again, the rain was coming down. Uh, I managed to um, hold onto it for a couple of laps, but you can see just over a, a few minute period that the track went from dry to completely soaked with full, full course yellow because uh, the Bentley went in the gravel at turn one. So it shows you how quickly things can change uh, here at Kailami. However, this played into Walken Horse's hands and Walken Horse's strategy as they absolutely nailed it to uh, get the pit stops and the pit stop timing right to then come out in the final hour. Even though the final hour and a half was all done under full course yellow and safety car, um, we managed to leapfrog three cars ahead of us to uh, bring the 34 car home for its second win of the year in the Intercontinental GT Challenge. And also with that, they were able to take the championship, which was an amazing feeling to be in the garage and uh, see the result and uh, see the, um, the result of the championship as well. It's been a pleasure to share the year with these guys, to see how hard everyone's worked for this and for it all to come together in quite dramatic fashion was a great place to be. It's always interesting to hear a racing driver's debrief after the race. And if you listen closely, you can hear uh, Nicky Katzberg's debrief that it wasn't exactly plain sailing, even under a full course yellow at 80 kph out on circuit. I went to the gravel three times. No way. <laughs> Winners of the Kyle Army nine hours and the Intercontinental GT Challenge World Championship, effectively. For Nicky and Augusto. It's, uh, Gonna be a good night tonight, I think. Huge congrats to the team, Nick and Max in particular, team manager and engineer, absolutely shit hot. Big thanks to Gerd, our engineer as well. We've got to get to the end. It was a super tough race for us. Carl wasn't quite in the window, and when the gr uh, grid is so competitive like this, uh, yeah, we dropped back and ultimately we were lapped down. Um, the track came to us in the end, and we had some pretty decent pace, but uh, it was about seven hours too late, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, super pleased with the sister car. Let's get to the podium. Incredible drive here. From Germany, the Vakalos BMW team of Nicky Katzberg, Augusto Farkus, and South Africa's very own.
So it was a pretty epic way to end the season and end the year in what's been a pretty crazy year. But when you look at Volkenhorst and BMW's achievements, they won the NLF Championship uh, with myself uh, and also the Intercontinental GT Challenge Championship. So they've entered every, they've won every championship they've entered in 2020, which is uh, a mega, mega achievement. Um, so yeah, signing off for 2020. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you do, please make sure you give it a thumbs up uh, and then drop a, a comment um, in the comments for anything you'd like to see going into 2021. Uh, until next time, happy new year and we'll catch up in 2021.